All right, guys, let's get started today. Uh, today is Thursday. What's the date? Forgetting September something. September 8th. Time is going by. Clock is ticking. The year's almost over. Um, no, but uh, today's level up training, guys, we're going to be going over uh, some of the fundamentals of how to develop a business plan. I sent you guys all a worksheet. I put it in the chat as well. There's a worksheet that you can click on and print out. It's just a simple one page PDF worksheet. It's also in Slack. I just posted it in there. So if you guys want to print that out and uh, follow along, you also can just simply take notes and just write somewhere like on a piece of paper, on your phone, uh, pull up a Google Doc and just type. But for this to be effective, guys, you definitely want to write this stuff down, right? I don't, if this is going to be a, a kind of a workshop style today where you writing things down is going to be very, very important to your success. <laughs> Um, we don't want it to be where I'm just talking at you guys, you guys are just listening and you're not like actually putting anything into action because it's going to be different for each one of you, uh, depending on your goals and stuff like that. Uh, so everyone's business plan is going to look different, right? Some of you guys may have bigger goals. Uh, maybe you want to close more deals. Maybe you want to make more income and stuff like that. Uh, so it might be different. Maybe you have a different lead generation strategy that you want to focus on. Uh, so it might be different for you as well. Now, I always like to start off with mindset, guys, uh, and really talk about why it's important to have a business plan um, when you're getting into this business, right? When you're getting into real estate, when you're going to start any business, right? Having a plan is crucial to your success. Um, and a lot of agents get into the business and they don't actually have a plan that they're following. They may, you know, join a team or they may join a company or a brokerage, and there's so many different ways that you can generate business and so many ways you can do real estate. And, um, and if you don't have something that you're gonna pick and that you're gonna focus on, you can't expect to have you know, consistency in your business. You can't expect to have uh, high results, right? And what I see, the mistake that even I made early on and that I see a lot of agents make is they come in and they kind of just do a bunch of different things. They're doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. They're doing some open houses. They're door knocking sometimes. They're taking some online leads sometimes. They're cold calling sometimes. They go to a networking event here and there. And they're kind of just, it's kind of like that shotgun uh, mentality, right? Where I'm just kind of spreading out and I'm kind of doing everything. And they don't really go deep on any of these strategies, right? And what happens is if you kind of spread yourself out thin, and you don't really pick a lane that you want to stay in and go deep in that lane, you're not going to have the results that you're looking for. It's going to be very inconsistent and it'll go up and down. And yeah, you might get some results from here and there, but you will never get a high level of result because you just didn't put the time and energy to get good at, at a couple things, right? So that's really what a business plan is all about. It's about being intentional. It's about understanding what your plan of attack is. Um, and I'm going to give you an example right now. Um, who can I call on that would like to participate real quick? I'm just going to ask you just a random question. I want to see what your answer is for the sake of this. Who wants to volunteer? Thomas, you raise your hand. Thomas Roscoe. Yep. yep. So Thomas, if, if I were to ask you today to build me a two-story house, and you had to go out there and figure it out, what would you do? What, what, what comes naturally to your mind? Like what, what would your thought process be? Uh, probably go to YouTube or Google first. Okay, and then what? So walk any me builders that I know. Okay. So go educate yourself a little bit first, right? And, and then what would you do? connect with as much people as possible that have done it and see if they can help. Okay. And then once you got the help, then what would you do? Um, and then get the plan for the house. I don't know how much of this I have to do on my own. And you said by today. Well, I, I need you to like put a plan in place by today, right? 
Okay, so yeah, I would. I think I've got like crazy. So I would consult with as much people as possible. Ask them to direct me to the right people as well. Network, and then probably get a team together to do it. Okay. All right. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. Thanks for participating, brother. This is uh, this is completely. I don't expect you to know the right answer. I just want to see naturally what comes to your mind for the sake of this example. All right, Jason, um, you've been involved in construction and building and stuff like that. So you have more experience than, than Thomas probably in this side of it. So what would you do, Jason, if, if I said, hey, I want to hire you or I want you to help me build a, a two-story home and I want you to put a plan together today? So yeah, definitely. Um, let's see, I would probably meet with my, my contractor, walk the property, uh, put together, get a design together with an architect and then start um, pricing it out on looking at a budget with material, looking at a budget of labor cost, looking at a timeline. Okay. How would you come up with the money? Uh, the money, I would probably, let's see. I would tap into people that are closest to me. I mean, what we've done in the past, we have hard money lenders that I would have access to. So if I present them a project, they would just want to see, they would want to see how much I'm buying the property for. They would want to see how much I can go ahead and resell the property. If that was the plan to resell it or how quickly I can get their money back. Got it. Okay. So I'm showing you guys just two extremes, right? Like Thomas just came up like, you know, out of thin air and you tried your best and you kind of thought like what naturally comes to you. Now, Jason has some experience in construction and building and stuff like that. So immediately like, he already knew, like, I got to meet with the contractor. I got to walk the property. I got to get an architect involved. I got to come up with design. Um, probably if we kept talking, he'd probably say, hey, I got to look into what the permit process is, what the timeline is, and all that stuff, right? So there would be a well thought out plan for how he was going to attack this project and how he was going to build this home, right? And the analogy, I'm making this analogy because it's the same thing with your real estate business. Like, you can come in there and you can try to like maybe wing it and figure it out and maybe like do what you think you should do. But if you don't have a, a well thought out plan, like there's so many things that can go wrong. It can take a lot longer. Maybe you get to the finish line, but you lost a bunch of money or you spent money where you weren't supposed to, or you weren't efficient, right? Maybe it took you twice as long as maybe it took Jason because Jason already has like a thought out plan and some experience. It's the same thing with your real estate business, right? Like if you just come in there and you wing it and you're like, hey, I'm just going to show up and like just give it effort, like that's the starting point, right? But if there's no plan that you're following where like it's methodical, like what days am I going to show up? How many calls do I need to make? How many leads do I need to generate every single month? Where are my leads coming from, right? What's my main focus going to be on how I generate business? What's my follow-up process after that to make sure I convert these at a high level? How much income do I want to make, right? If I want to make 250000 a year, well, how much commission do I make per deal? What are my splits? How many deals would I have to close, right? What's the average price point I would need to do, right? Like, so these are all things that you need to think about because otherwise you're just going into this thing blind and you're kind of just giving it your best shot, you know, which, which Thomas demonstrated, gave it his best shot, right? And, and trying to figure it out as he goes. Uh, or you can take the approach of Jason, who's done this before and says, hey, we're going to map out an exact game plan. We're going to be very specific. We're going to know exactly what we're trying to accomplish. And then from there, we're going to be able to execute once the plan is all laid out. So that is ex that's the perfect example of why you need a business plan, because a lot of times we don't know what we don't know. And we want to be as efficient as possible, right? Like if you want to get from you know, wherever you're at in your career right now and jump up a bunch of levels or take your income to another level or take your business to another level, you can take it in a straight line if you have a plan. If you don't have a plan, it's going to be the ups, the downs, the lefts, the rights, right? Like it's going to be all over the place. But to get there in as straight of a line as possible from point A to point B in a straight line, right, which is going to be the fastest way you have to have a well thought out plan. And it's something that you have to commit to. You have to continue to reevaluate. You have to continue to adjust as you go as well to make sure that you're on track, make sure that the plan is working. And then also be honest with yourself to say like, hey, is this the best plan for me, right? 
And am I, am I executing the plan at the highest level? Right. So I want to start off with, with talking about this because the mindset part is extremely important, right? Because if, if you don't think a plan is important, then you won't put together the plan and you won't follow it. Right. So we need to understand why it's important and why it's crucial to our success in business. And Jason and I have had the opportunity to be coached and mentored by uh, big team leaders, agents doing a lot of business, uh, stuff like that. We've been had the opportunity to surround ourselves with a lot of people. And the common denominator with all of these people who are really successful in real estate is that they truly run their business like a business. They look at it like a business. They're very methodical in their approach. They're very laser focused in how they're going to do things. They say no to a lot of things if it doesn't align with their plan, right? They're not constantly like trying different things out. They're focusing on a handful of things and just going really deep with them and executing. Um, and, and that's what I noticed, right? They really know their business like the back of their hand. They know how many appointments it takes to, you know, to meet with the client, what the cost per lead is, like all those different things. So I want to get you guys thinking like being a real estate agent is and getting your license. That's, you know, even though the test may be hard for some people, that's the easy part, right? But to be able to build a business and have it run as efficient as possible, that's the more challenging part, right? That's the part where if you've never ran a business before, like you're, you're kind of just hustling, right? You're not, you're not really going at it with a strategy or a method. Um, okay. So that sheet, I'm going to pull that sheet up and we're going to walk through it. And for you to get the most out of this, guys, you need to take some notes down. You need to start filling in the blanks, whether it's on that sheet that I gave you or whether it's on a sheet of paper or even type it into your cell phone or pull up a, a document on your computer and start filling it out. And remember, it's not going to be perfect, right? This is going to give you guys an outline and you can go back and refine it and edit it. But I at least want to give you guys the game plan. So I'm going to share my screen right now. And I've used this here to coach different agents and stuff like that. Let me see how can I get full screen. Um, okay, so individual game plan. So if we're gonna attack this thing guys and, and figure out how we're gonna put this game plan for our, our business, there's a few things that you're gonna have to go over. Number one, what I want you guys to start thinking about is who is my ideal client, right? So I want you guys to first write that down. Ideal client, what is your ideal client, right? And when I think about ideal client is what's the avatar for your client? Like the client that you're trying to go after, that doesn't mean you may not run into other types of clients, but if I had to say, hey, you can only choose to work with one type of client, you know, and that's how you're gonna really build the foundation for your business, what, would describe your client? Would it be first time home buyers, first time home sellers, maybe both, right? It could be buyers and sellers. Would it be business owners? Would it be tech people? Would it be people that have, you know, good income, good down payments? Um, and when I say ideal client, also talk about your ideal area, right? Where would these clients live or where would they be wanting to purchase or sell a home? So, Describe your ideal client. Now, the more specific you can get on this, the better, right? Like, for example, I can say, my, my ideal client are first time home buyers who make good income and have good down payment and first time home sellers uh, who have plenty of equity in their home and are super motivated to sell. And my ideal area is going to be anywhere in the Silicon Valley, uh, you know, maybe Santa Clara County, maybe the East Bay. Maybe I don't want to work the peninsula. So that's, I don't touch that area. Maybe I only focus on Santa Clara County. Like that's my ideal client. Someone who's right in my backyard because I live in San Jose and I know the area very well. And those are my ideal clients. Those are the clients that I would hope that I can get every single time.
Now, the reason it's important to have an ideal client is because a lot of times you may be presented with different opportunities, right? You also may want to write down like what type of home are they buying? Are they buying single family homes? Are they buying condos or townhouses? Are they, you know, doing both? Are they buying mobile homes? You know, or are they buying land? Are they investors, right? The more focused that you can get and the more uh, detailed, the better. Because then what happens is when you know what your ideal client is and other opportunities present themselves, you can just simply ask yourself like, hey, is this going to be worth my while? Like I have a business plan that I'm following and I'm trying to follow it to the T as much as possible. And yeah, I got this guy who wants to buy in Sacramento, um, you know, but he's not really that motivated and he doesn't have a lot of money you know, should I go spend my time working on this client or should I go back to what my ideal client is and search for more clients and maybe refer that guy out somewhere else? Or I got a guy that wants to buy a mobile home, you know, and like, I don't really know much about mobile homes. I could probably figure it out, but it's going to take me away from working on the things that I said I was going to work on. And now that kind of throws me off track. Or someone with like trying to buy a piece of land, right? Sometimes we spend time on certain clients or certain types of people that are not in line with what we're trying to do in the big picture. And it derails you from getting to your goal as fast as possible. Even for us guys, like even when we bring on new agents, like we do the same thing with our business plan of how we run the, the team, right? As we start to bring on new agents, we also have an ideal type of agent, the agent that we're looking for. We're not just looking for any agent. We're looking for the agents to possess a certain qualities. Are they all going to be a hundred percent in that box? No, but there's certain things that's like, Hey, they got to at least meet like these three or four things for me to consider wanting to have them on our team. Because the minute I take an agent on our team that is completely out of line with who our ideal agent is, then I spend time and energy on that agent that I can't get back. Right. When I can be pouring that time and energy into the agents who do fit the mold or do fit, you know, what we're trying to build. So really quick, guys. Uh, what's your ideal client? Let me get who would like to tell me what they wrote down for ideal client. Just feel free to. Uh, Relax, fun, reasonable, first time home buyers, millennials. Okay. I put people in tech who wants to buy condo townhomes in the peninsula. Okay. Anybody else? What you got, uh, Connie? Um, I Are you guys streaming this on the big screen? Is that why? Uh, I put down great communication, responsive, receptive, first time home buyer, uh, healthy down payment, Fremont school district, single family home, um, great income, um, just fun, happy people. <laughs> okay, cool. Those are all good stuff. So some of you guys described like the personality type that you would like, which is good. Um, but I would, those of you guys that only wrote down like fun, you know, cool people to work with, I would also challenge you to get them a little bit more specific on like what type of, uh, buyer or seller profile, like, right. Like where are they buying at? Is there a certain price point? Uh, do they have a certain level of income, right? Do they have a certain employment type? And then those of you that got really specific, like on, I only want a certain area, like, or a certain city. Uh, my question to you is like, like Connie said, Fremont, but like, if I had a client that you described, but they were in San Jose, are you going to take that client? That was a question to Connie. Sorry. So sorry. You were very specific about Fremont, right? Um, um it's okay. I said Fremont school district. So, you know, I'm really open to this, the area that I'm from, but I'm also open to other areas. It's just the preference is Fremont school district. So that's like Cupertino, um, Sunnyvale, Saratoga kind of area. 
Got and it. like neighboring cities. Okay. So I would maybe, I would maybe um, write that down, right? Like that's, that would be like your 10 out of 10 ideal client, but maybe if there's any other cities or any other neighborhoods or whatever, I would also include those um, on there. Okay. Any questions guys on ideal client? Okay. The next thing on the list guys is going to be uh, identifying your strengths. Right. When we want to identify our strengths, like what we're good at, what we already bring to the table or the things that we already know and understand in the business. Right. Maybe like, hey, I know I know how to work with buyers. I got the buyer consultation down. I know how to show homes um, and stuff like that. And those are my strengths. Right. Like I'm very consistent, uh, you know, with with that part of the business. And then we're going to write down, like, what are some skills that you also need to develop, right? Like, if you want to work with that ideal client, what skills would you need to develop to work with them? So let's say you don't know the buyer consultation. That's the first thing you're going to write on your list. Like, I need to master the buyer consultation and the buyer process. Or let's say, let's say your ideal client was, was more sellers or more listings, and you're probably going to, and you don't know the listing presentation yet, then you're probably going to want to write that down on that, Right. So I want you to go to the next steps of what are your strengths? What are you very good at, right? Or what do you feel like you have a really good grasp and a good handle on? And then what are the weaknesses or the skills that you need to be able to convert and close more of these ideal clients, right? So strengths and skills needed. I want you to fill in those two. And for some of you guys, it may just be a few things. For some of you guys that are newer, maybe, maybe there's a lot of things that you have, you need to work on. Um, and you maybe you don't have a lot of strengths yet. So, you know, be honest with yourself or maybe just write down like the top two or three that are the most important right now, right? Because, you know, we all have skills that we want to develop, you know, but we, wanna, we don't want to write down 10 or 20 of them. We might we want to write down like the three that are most important today to move my, my business forward. Oh, that's how we do that. All right, who wants to share real quick? What are your strengths and what are your skills needed? Just feel free to unmute yourself. I am good at connecting with people during showings and making the and booking that buyer consultation. The skill that I need to work on is when I speak sometimes and I get nervous, I go and then and then. I mean, like I stop saying ums a lot. So then that um, the and then replace the um. So then now I need to work on stop saying and then. Okay. Now, when I ask for skill, um, like an and or an um or an and them, like even though that's something you got to work on, but what's like a big thing that you need in your business that's going to, that would move your, like if you corrected all your ands and ums, is that going to take you from, you know, closing 10 times more deals? Like what's something that you need to, work on or implement or master that's going to like really make a uh, a big uh leaps and bounds in your business it goes with my script too because i just i'm just not confident with my scripts so okay. like talking I, I could the connections that i make during showings it's pretty easy just because like i i'm good at it so then i know what to say and then i know how to connect with people face to face but like over the phone i get really nervous okay and I don't know what to say so that's my weakness got it so it's good that we're digging a little bit more right because now it's more of you need to get more comfortable with the scripts more comfortable at converting 
you know, people over the phone, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a general one. And that's going to kind of encompass all those different things that you mentioned. Okay. Thanks for sharing, Jessica. Who else would like to share? Let's get two more. What are your strengths and what are your skills needed? So um, I put my strengths are building relationships, communication, and marketing. My skills needed, needed are implementation of um, processes So and my marketing plan, um, the need to master the buyer uh, consultation and process, and then comfort um, level with scripts and objections. Okay, excellent. Really good stuff, really specific there. Um, okay, who else? Let's get one more. Let's go. Teddy, I'm going to call on someone, someone who hasn't volunteered yet. Thomas, I know you're, you're volunteering a lot. Um, Manny, you were about to unmute yourself. What you got? Yeah. How you doing, Enrique? Uh, so in regards to strengths, um, I'm comfortable around uh, the contract. Uh, I understand the contract pretty well. And also, number two, uh, I'm pretty good at building rapport when meeting people um, face to face. I can get a lot of information from them uh, and dig deeper. Uh, my challenges are what I need to work on is basically scripts, uh, buyer, seller presentation, that kind of stuff, you know, and when to stop talking. <laughs> okay. Or dig, what I say, over the phone. Okay, perfect. So your strengths are, you know, the contract, you know, the process, right? You have that experience. You're good at connecting with people face to face. And then what you need to work on is, the buyer presentation, maybe mastering that or learning, you know, our process, the listing presentation, mastering that, and then learning more of the scripts when you're on the phone and stuff like that. Awesome. Correct. Awesome. Correct. Correct. And what, what I want you guys, what I want to point out guys is that it's important that you write these things down. Cause if you can get very specific, like once we're done with this call, you know, exactly the things that you got to work on, right? Like if, if you're saying scripts today, you should be on every Wednesday script training that we have, right? It's right there, right? That's at least one way to continue to, to build your scripts and learn the scripts by being on every single script training and also participating every single time we call on someone to participate because then you'll immediately be able to check that one off your list. And after a, a few weeks or maybe a month or two, you'll dramatically improve. If some of you guys said, hey, I need to learn the buyer presentation, you should be booking times to meet with one of the senior agents on the team and role play the buyer presentation. You should be practicing it. You should be recording yourself. You should be doing a mock role play on Zoom, maybe with you and somebody else. Try it on your, your kid, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your aunt, your uncle, your mom or dad. Like you already know, like this is what I need to attack because once I get that down, it's going to unlock all these other things for me in my business, right? Dewey, you were going to uh, raise your hand. What you got? Um, for me, uh, my strength are uh, willingness to learn and build connection. Um, and the skill needed is that uh, I want to learn more about marketing. Uh, I want to learn more about uh, confident. Uh, and uh, I do get nervous a lot. So I want to be a little bit more confident and, uh, in what I say. <laughs> and I want to build connection. So those are the things that I need to work on. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. When you say marketing, Dewey, what do you mean by marketing? Because marketing is a very general term. So uh, I created uh, an Instagram page for my real estate, uh, for my real estate, and I'm planning to uh, report myself more. Uh, I, I don't really report myself in the past because uh, I don't like to put myself out there. <laughs> but now I'm planning to do that more and learn more about uh, um, uh, about how to market myself and my brand to uh, my friends and family and to other people. So in the future, uh, people will know me more as a, a realtor. So that's something that I want to learn more. And then uh, in the future, uh, help me in real estate. Got it. Got it. So uh, when you say marketing, you're meaning more of how to market yourself on social media and how to build your brand and stuff like that and get your, get your name out there. 
Um, this is kind of off topic, but since you brought it up, I would not recommend anybody get a separate real estate page. I would not recommend that at all because Instagram and social media is all about creating a personal brand, right? And your personal brand encompasses all of who you are because you're not just like a realtor, like Monday through Friday, nine to five. And then after that, like you're a party guy or you're like a workout guru or anything like that, right? Like who you are and why someone would work with you is because they like everything about you, right? They like the fact that you're a professional. They like the things that you're into. They like the things that you do on the weekends, right? So I would never recommend you getting a separate page because you're making it a lot harder for yourself because now you got to try to build followers on this separate page, right? Um, that's the number one challenge. And then number two, is that it, it, it puts in your mind that you gotta like be someone and then someone else and then someone and someone else, right? When you just gotta be more of yourself and then show people all the different sides of you, show them why you're a good agent, show them why you're out with your friends, show them why you're out with your family and all that stuff. So just some food for thought for some of you guys that if that's part of your business plan, one page, give everybody everything about you, right? That'll build connection and rapport a lot faster with people. Um, because they already know you if they're following you. Uh, all right. Next part of this, uh, lead generation. We're probably gonna get to like the first half of this guys because this thing can go deep and we'll, we'll continue and pick up again uh, next week because we're, I only wanna make this an hour today. Uh, lead generation. This is the very, very important part guys, lead generation. When I ask for lead generation, this is where you got to get clear on how am I generating my business, right? Like if I said, hey, uh, Alessandra, you can only pick two or three. There's three spots on there, but even two is great, right? But three is probably the most that I would recommend. You can only pick three and that's the only way you can go get leads because I want you to become a master at those three, right? What would it be? How would you generate business and how would you generate leads? Would it be you take online leads, right? You're on Zillow Flex and you're on these, you're getting other leads from online sources and you want to like get as many as you can. And that's going to be like one of the, the pillars in your business. Like I take online leads and I work them and I do a great job with them and I get referrals and I go really, really deep with those. And I, all my leads are up to date. There's notes. The statuses are updated. I check on them every single day. Like I go deep with online leads and I want to be the king or the queen of online leads, right? And that's a that's how I get, you know, a big part of my business. Maybe you like open houses, right? And you're, you know, but if you're going to do open houses, you don't want to be like do an open house here, or one there and like kind of dabble in it. Like if, if open houses is going to be a staple in your business, you got to start thinking like, how many open houses do I got to do a month? You know, where am I going to get the open house opportunities from? I'm going to get them maybe from the team. And if the team doesn't have any, I got to reach out to other agents and I got to try to do six open houses a month because that's part of my game plan. And when I do my open houses, there's a process that I follow where I have a process for when I show up, what time I show up, how many signs I put out, what I bring to the open house, what I say at the open house. Do I have snacks? Do I have cookies? Do I have waters? Do I get people to sign in on the iPad or do I get them to sign a piece of paper? Like this is now going deep with, with it, right? Because if you want to be the king or the queen of open houses, you need to have a well thought out process of like how you're going to be the best freaking open house agent, right? And then the other one, which should be on your, on one of those three is working your network, your friends and family and the people who already know you and trust you. But what is your strategy for working your friends and family to get them to stay top of mind? Am I going to do social media where I'm going to be posting all the time and I'm going to make sure everyone sees what I'm doing and stay top of mind? Or maybe I'm scared to do social media and I don't like putting myself out there, but I'm going to freaking call all the people I know every couple months. I'm just going to check in with them and I'm going to be more of a direct contact type of person you know, maybe, hey, I'm going to also send them emails every single month, educational videos, which is something that I do and I recommend you do. 
or maybe events. I'm going to take people out to lunch. People I know that I that are good connections, I'm going to take them out to lunch or I'm going to invite them to dinner or I'm going to invite them to my client event. And that's going to be part of my strategy. So there's many ways you can get business, right? You can network, you can cold call, you can door knock. But what you shouldn't do is you shouldn't pick like 10 different things and just do them all half ass, right? Because that's where most agents do. And that's where most agents go wrong is they're trying to do too many things and they're not good at any of them because they're not going deep with any of them. Um, so I want you to write down on there if I had to pick only three ways to get business forever, what are the three ways that I enjoy doing, that I can do every day, that I can commit to? Maybe it's only two. You can also just put two down. I, I think starting with two is also a good spot. Um, and then as you get something like going up and it's, it's working really well, then you can add another pillar later once you have your two pillars already firing off as efficient as possible. Yeah, and Enrique, ju just to mention, I mean, like you said, the lead generation, we have the one pillar, which we have the online leads, right? The majority of the people on this call have access to. So building out that, that second pillar and go really deep into it. And this is something that I, I know Enrique and I have learned over the past. I know he mentioned it before, but we try to do too many things at once. So if you just pick two things and go extremely deep on these two things, you'll see a lot of results a lot faster. Yeah. And I think what happens is, guys, as we're having this discussion, I hopefully want some light bulbs to go off in your head, right? Because you may not have been looking at the business this way. You may have thought like, oh, we're supposed to get on flex because that's what everyone's doing, right? Because that's what, we, that's what we preach. Like Jason and I, our, our uh, lead generation strategy for the whole company is online leads and working our friends and family in our database, right? That doesn't mean like some people on the team aren't doing open houses and stuff like that and they get business, but that's our overall lead generation strategy, right? We've narrowed it down to like these two. And if you look at our business, we've generated hundreds of million do millions of dollars worth of sales because we're focused on those two. So with you knowing this now, hopefully the light bulb goes off and you're like, man, I got to take this a little bit more seriously now because if these are my two pillars, Am I really going deep with these pillars or am I like adding a bunch of other things and I'm, I'm trying this and I'm trying that and I'm not sticking to the plan, right? Because sometimes there's some people on our team that are doing that, like they're doing, they're taking leads, but they're not really going deep with them. And then they're also doing these other things. Oh, I'm going to go door knock or I'm going to go do this thing and I'm going to go do that. And then they're not following up with the leads they already have or they're not doing any of them like really, really well, right? It's the agents that say, hey, like, no, these are the two and I'm just going deep. Those are the agents that start building the momentum and start getting the results. And again, I think it's also that, that chasing that shiny object syndrome, right? It, it's you, we got to kind of be narrow, just kind of tunnel vision and just pick those things and understand that it's just being consistent and repeating that process over and over and over again is what's going to get to the results. Yes, sir. And here's the thing, if you go out there and you talk to other agents outside of our organization, if you talk to five top producers, they're gonna tell you five different ways that they get business. So let me tell you something, they all work. All of them work. The best lead generation strategy is the one that you're gonna to commit to and go deep with and go do it at a high level. There's agents I know out there that don't do online leads, they do farming, right? They send out hundreds of thousands of flyers every single month and that's all they do, but they've mastered it. Right. And they do it consistently and it's scaled and they get a ton of calls coming in from that strategy. Right. They know how much they're spending on flyers, how much it costs for postage. They figured out ways how to master that system and that works. Right. There's agents I know that are super successful that all they do is network and put on events. Like, because they love partying, they love networking with people, they love inviting people to dinner, they love going out to lunch, they love being like the life, they love having uh, events at their house, they love putting on exclusive dinners. Like one of my buddies, uh, uh, AJ, uh, 
he was in our coaching program, Lars, uh, AJ and, and his wife, he was a, he was a former athlete. Uh, yeah, basketball guy, former athlete, D1 college and stuff like that. He knows a lot of athletes. And he said like, he gets most of his business by just putting on events like all the time. Like he's always uh, having dinners, basketball things, meeting with these guys, meeting with the movers and shakers, these other athletes, he knows professional athletes. He's not, he's not high on, on Zillow flex or online leads or anything. Like he's, he says a lot of it is just, I just, I put on events every other month. I do workshops, I do events and that's my thing. I'm the freaking king of that. And most of my business comes from, from that, from that right there. Um, there's people that I know, uh, if anybody knows Kevion, right down South, crushing it, killing it in the luxury space, he built his business off a of door knocking. Because his mentor Thatch, that's all he did was door knock. For the first five years of his career, he would door knock a thousand homes every single month for five years straight. He did that. But what he did is he started door knocking luxury homes instead of just door knocking the regular homes because he knew that his ideal client was someone that owned a luxury property on the coast near like Costa Mesa, Huntington Beach, all those areas over there. And he wanted, you know, to just door knock 5 million and up. So he's door knocking like $15 million properties, $20 million properties. Everybody on his team, he trains them on how to just door knock. They just go out there and they door knock, they door knock, they door knock. He did that for five years. And then from there, he built so much business and referrals and stuff that he no longer has to go door knock as much as he did before. So the point I'm trying to make guys is if you just pick a lane and you stick with it and you go all in, you will get results from that, right? If I ask Kevion, like, hey, do you do online leads? He laughs. He talks shit about Zillow, right? In fact, like when he markets himself, he like shows properties. He goes, properties you won't see on Zillow. Like he, he makes it a joke, right? Like he's anti-Zillow, right? Because he's just, he's door knocking. He's tunnel vision, right? Tunnel vision with door knocking the luxury properties. That's it. Um. So for you guys, give me some feedback. What are your three lead generation strategies? Let's take a couple. I only have two. It's calling the pawn plus Zillow Flex. But to dig deep into those, I am doing a follow-up plan or like creating a follow-up plan and then also creating client events and also sending information videos, like you said, and then weekly emails with like local events. And since the Alliance people always put out the interest rates once a week, I'm gonna add that to the weekly email. Um, to, one thing that I learned from Tom Ferry with the uh, training yesterday or last week was how to send out that email, the weekly email to make it not too salesy too. Excellent. So you said calling the pond, which the pond is, is pretty much all the older online leads that we have mm -hmm. taking Zillow flex. So I would say those two are basically working online leads. Mm -hmm. That's basically one pillar, right? Um, working online leads. And then the other one that you just it described was going to be working your database, right? By doing client events, by doing emails with educational information, um, stuff like that, right? Because everyone could go into that database. The leads that you got, your friends and family, people on social media, right? That's, that's, uh, so though what I hear right there is, is two pillars, right? Okay. Um, you know, because one pillar can have a bunch of steps in it, right? Like, all right, online leads and I do all these things and they all go under that one bucket. Okay. The, what would be the steps for the online? Because like, if you say the follow-up, the client events, sending information out, those are working my spheres. What are some of the steps that I could do for the calling the pawn and Zillow Flex, like the subtask? Um, I would more think of like, if you wanted to convert these leads at, a, at the highest level, then what things can I add to besides just calling them to mm -hmm. make them to show more value, right? So some of the things you can do with online leads to convert them even better is incorporate video text with all your online leads, right? Because that's something that a lot of agents don't do. So if you say, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crush it with these online leads and these Zillow Flex, they're all online leads, right? 
Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm going to send videos to every single one because that's going to be part of my process that I do to convert them at a higher level. I'm going to send helpful articles to these clients, or I'm going to handpick properties that I send to these clients when I know they're looking for certain properties. Um, I'm also going to overlap them and put them into my email list as well. So they're getting my emails. Um, I would even go as far as figuring out like, what's the protocol for how many times you call them, how many times you follow up, right? Like going deep with that because just saying I'm going to call the pawn. It's very general, right? Like, it's like, no, every time I get a lead, I call them three times on the first day. Then I send the text. Then I call them three times the next day. Right. And like, I got to hit them 15 times before I put that lead in the pond. So going deep with, with how you run that process. Right. And then, you know, I'm just giving you some ideas and then from there you can work out your game plan. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, what's your lead generation strategy? Teddy, I'm calling on you, brother. What'd you write down? Um, I wrote down social media. Like one thing I'm trying to do more is make videos. Okay. But um, my ideal client was, well, one of my ideal ideal clients was Fizbo's and Expireds. And I think that I'm going to start using online leads like my plus leads or Volcan 7 to reach out to them. Okay. Uh, so those are two different things, right? There's both an expired. That's you calling, right? Cold calling these people. And then the other one was social media. So what I would do now is if those are the two that you want to focus on is I would get deep, go deep with, okay, social media. How many times am I posting? How many videos am I making every single week? What is my content you know, what's the main theme of all my content? Is it geared towards first time buyers? Is it geared towards sellers? Is it geared towards just anybody looking for real estate? Like what's, what's the message that I'm putting out there, right? And then get really specific with how you're going to execute that plan. Maybe you're saying like, hey, every week I do two videos, two videos a week, you know, once for buyers and once for sellers or two videos a week, you know, around, you know, what the rates are, or whatever it might be, right? A market update. But you got to get really specific, right? If social media is going to be your thing, there has to be a strategy behind your social media. Like for me, if you guys, and those of you guys that follow me, I'm trying to, you know, recruit agents and build our team and stuff like that. So I'm constantly putting out videos. My goal is to put like three to five videos out every single week that are educational videos for agents that talk about mindset, that talk about strategy, that showcase our team and stuff like that, right? That's my strategy for social media. and then. I also am sending out educational videos to agents, um, which are longer form, where I'm sending out two videos a month with, you know, going deeper with some of like the topics, like even like this right here, like showing someone how to do a business plan. That's going to be a video that I'm going to send out to my list of agents, to my, my target audience. All right. So it, there's a strategy, right. And I've been doing that for years and, and, and I'm, you know, building on it. Uh, let's get one more. Um, I have a question. How many yeah. times do you think we should follow up with, with our leads and then send them to the pond if they don't respond? Like at, least, at least 10 to at least 10 to 15 times. Within a week or within the first within the first one to two weeks. Like, and that should be a combination of calls, text, emails, right? Video, video text. Does that include like if the lender touch them too, or is it just us? Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you want to put the fate of your closings in the lender's hand, or do you want to take control of your business? Right. That's the only way I can answer that because now it's relying on someone else to make sure that they followed up with them. What if the lender isn't as diligent as you and they didn't make the calls, right? Or what if they, you know, so I would rather be in control of my process and say like, hey, this is what I'm going to commit to. And then anything extra from the lender or whatever, that's just gravy on top. All right. So I would I would only take be accountable for what you can do. 
Um, yeah, so 10 to 15 times, right? So here's what I want to get at, guys, is if you want to do something at a high level, you got to take some control and ownership of your business. That's just the bottom line, right? Like if you're getting a lead from Zillow Flex and it's a hot lead and it's a $2 million lead, and I know that I can do the math and I can say, okay, after paying Zillow and after team splits and all that, I'm going to make $15,000 or $20,000. It's worth it for me to call this lead 15 times and chase the crap out of this lead and like say, hey, this is what I'm going to do with every single lead because that's my job, right? That's what I signed up for. So it, 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 the question becomes like, how bad do you want to convert this thing? Like how bad do you want this to work, you know? Um, because when you have that attitude, like, shoot, this is a hot opportunity. And if I don't follow up with this guy, they're probably meeting someone else at an open house. They're probably going on another website and clicking on something. So I need to like, say like, this is how I work all my leads, right? It needs to be a standard of how you do it, do it all. And that's the part where, where, where agents, like they, they fail to realize that there has to be standards in your business, right? There has to be like, this is the way Alessandra does it. Like I'm calling this the Alessandra way because I know that like, I'm freaking, I need this. I need to close these deals. I got bills to pay. I got goals. I want to take a vacation. Like I got things I want to accomplish. So this is the Alessandra way that I work my leads. I don't know about you guys, but this is how I do shit, right? Like that's the attitude you need to have because only then are you going to be willing to do what it takes, you know? So it, I can only give you the guidance, right? Like 10 to 15 times. But Alessandra, if you want it bad, like call them 20 times. Like bug the shit out of them until they say, stop calling me. Right? 10 to 15 is like what they say, like industry standards and like what we hear on these podcasts and these masterminds. But I mean, are we going to do the minimum or are we, am I going to go 16 times because everyone else is doing 15? I, I do 18 because I'm in control of my shit. Right. Like <laughs> I'm closing these deals. Like I, I, I got the lead to come. I, I answered my phone. I clicked, I fought for the lead. I got it. Now I'm going to work the crap out of it. Right. Like that's, that's the difference between taking ownership and not taking ownership. Um, we're coming up on time, but I, let's, let's spend this last couple of minutes and then we'll continue this guys, because this, this could be like a two hour session, honestly. But uh, I think there's a lot of value just in, in the first part that we're, we're doing right now. And we'll go, we'll continue this again uh, next week and finish off. But for the next couple of minutes, what's your lead generation strategy? Um, Mai, what do you got? For me, I have the online leads and social media. So online leads, we have, you know, Zillow and all of the pawns. So that's been working for me. My thing with that is like, I have to nurture some of the nurtures. So I would probably send market update texts and the videos that you were talking about and do better with follow-up and calling them to the touches. As for social media, I am I need a kind of a schedule when to post and film and stuff. Cause I noticed like after posting on social media I feel like I've gotten a lot of engagement from it. So I feel like it's been working. So I'm gonna try to continue doing that. Awesome. Awesome. And I think those are two very smart strategies. Um, when you start thinking like, if social media is the thing I'm going to do, then start thinking of how I can do it smarter, right? For example, if you're always posting on social media, then I would say, have you checked your followers to make sure all your friends and family are following you, right? Because if you're already posting on social media, and like, let's say like, there's a bunch of people that you know that aren't following or seeing your stuff that I would be adding all these people, right? Making sure they I'm adding them so that they can see me. The other thing too, is like, if you're already spending time to make the, the uh, social media video that is, is good information, can I take that same video and email it to all my leads as well? So now you're killing two birds with one stone with the, with the same video, right? So because social media is great, as long as you have an audience, right. That's watching it. But then if you have all these leads, you know, like your Zillow leads and all that stuff, and you can also be taking that same video and emailing it to them also. All right. So, so how do you get more bang from your buck? And then you could take that video also, and you can post it on YouTube 
and that could be your YouTube channel. And it's the same video, right? And then you can also take that video and you can post it on Facebook. And then you can also take that same video and you can post it on LinkedIn. So now that one video, you hit five different audiences, right? And then you get five times the results. So, uh, and then think also, what's your schedule gonna be? Like how many videos am I doing per week? How many posts am I doing? Like if you wanna be the queen of video content, right? There should be a minimum standard for how many videos you do. I think there should be at least two to three videos a week. Because someone will watch a video and then boom, it disappears, right? They, they go on to the next. And we talked about this earlier, right? Where it's not about like having the best video, like the most like life-changing video ever. It's about the consistency of posting videos all the time that builds credibility with people so that when they are ready to buy or sell, they think my is the one that's been planting seeds in my head this whole time. So it's not one video that does it. It's the 72 videos you did in a year that, that does it, right? All right, lead generation strategy. Who else? What do you got? Steve, Torres, what do you got, bro? Uh, let's see. I got past clients, realtor relationships, social media, and builders. Okay, that's four. That's four. I would challenge you to maybe condense that to two or three, bro. Um, this is just my advice, right? Because those are four mm -hmm. different things. And I think the question you got to ask yourself, and those, those are all four good ones, right? Like those are four good ones. But are you going to get traction if you're doing four? Or if I only pick the best two out of all those and I just went all in, am I going to get more results, you know, and, and build off of that, right? It's, you kind of have that compounding, compounding effect. Yeah, I think like, like with um, my, uh, my past clients, I have them on uh, kind of like just auto. So I, I get, uh, I have HomeBot and I kind of just put them, I get, I shoot them information uh, throughout the month about their properties and whatnot. So I'm not really pushing that part. I'm more pushing on the, my realtors as well as the builders. Got it. So with your past clients, like all the auto stuff is great. Is there something else you can add to your past clients that's going to take that relationship even further? Uh, yeah. Because so I, I, the auto stuff, ahead. like the auto stuff will serve a purpose, right? Like those will fill in some of the gaps but there's nothing like getting face to face with someone or inviting them to an, a client event or calling someone like just to check in on them. Right. Because that is going to take your auto stuff and make it 10 times more powerful because they've been getting all this auto stuff, the home bots and all that's good information. Right. But then when you call them and say, Hey, what's up, brother, it's Steve, man. I just want to check in with you. You know, want to see if you've been getting the emails I've been sending you, you know, do you have any questions about those? Has it been useful? You know, and how's everything? How's the family? Now, like you built the foundation with the auto stuff, but then the personal call, like just took that relationship to a whole nother level, right? It lets you know, like you care about them, right? Yeah, makes sense. Or you invite them to an event. Hey, I want to invite you out to lunch. You know what I mean? And maybe you say, hey, like my past clients, I'm going to take five past clients out to lunch every single month, right? Cause those are the ones to me that win, right? Like when I, when I get to sit down with you face to face and we chop it up and we laugh and we check in, like now, like I'm, that just takes the relationship even deeper. Yeah. Um, and I'm saying that because hopefully all you guys can get something from that, right? Is that the autopilot stuff should not replace, it should only enhance yeah. the personal touch, right? So a mixture of personal touch and auto, I think is a, is a great combination uh, that'll get you a lot of results in the long run. Cool, man. So I would, uh, I would just challenge you to get laser focused, like figure out if you're gonna do all four, you know, really be realistic. Am I, am I going deep with all four? Can I go deep with all four? Or do I maybe just need to pick the, the two or three maybe tops that I can handle and go deep with? And some of them might cross over so you might be able to use similar things for, for the other ones. Yeah, I think that that's, that's one of the things that I've been working on is kind of dialing in on which, which ones are gonna give me the, my best results and really 
use my personality as well with it. You know what I mean? Because uh, I'm a people person, so I love to touch people. And so the more I'm in front, the more I'm talking, um, it's just, that's how you build that connection. Yep. Absolutely, man. Okay, guys, we're coming up on time now. Um, this will just be part one to this. We're going to continue this again next week with the second half of it. Um, really quick, guys, in the in Slack, I'm going to put a note in there, and I just want you to re hit reply. What was your biggest takeaway today? What was your biggest takeaway from today's? business plan, business planning session. So make sure you hit reply so it's all on that same thread. Give me some feedback. In the Slack. So I'm seeing a lot of you guys write down what I will, we emphasize, right? Having two or three strategies, being very specific on those, like focused on those, which is great, which is great. So what I want you guys to start thinking now, when opportunities come up that aren't in line with the things that you are choosing, this is where you have to be uh, disciplined to say no to other opportunities, right? Because it will derail you from the plan that you're choosing to go all in on, right? And it's really easy to chase the shiny object. Oh, this sounds like a good idea, right? But always ask yourself, and this is something that Jason and I have learned, right? And we got more disciplined as we went. Early on, we weren't. I was just saying yes to a bunch of things. Now it's like, is that in line with what I'm trying to build, right? Is that in line with the things that we're good at, the things that we've invested all this time in, the things that the strategy that we're trying to do? Um, and if it's not, if it's not a hell yes, then it should be a no, right? So because your plan that you stick to will surpass someone else's plan that they keep fumbling on and keep trying different things and not being consistent on, your simple plan of like the two things that you're just going deep on will pass them up like by light years because you're just consistent with it and you stick to it. Whereas someone who's always trying the different things and like, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go there. Like they'll never get, there's no teeth to that, right? They're never gonna grab, they're never gonna, it's never gonna grab and, and, and build that momentum, right? Cause it's just, you're, you're all over the place. So laser focus guys is, is the key. That's all I got for you guys. Hope you guys got some value today, guys. Let me know if you need anything. We'll continue part two of this uh, next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks.